Joining us in the studio this morning is a good, close, personal friend of both Chuck and Michelle's, someone who's been in our community for a good long time now, someone I've known for many years as well, Maggie Barnes. Hello, Dave. How are you? We're hanging in there. Yes, we are. Barely sometimes. It's a tough week. I'm sorry. I gave you the hardest intro oh, to follow heavens, this morning. That's okay. That's okay. Um, you know, anything for Chuck to be here to talk about him and Michelle. And I think the, the one aspect of, of Chuck that I wanted to highlight um, is their marriage. Um, Chuck and Michelle had one of the great love stories of the ages. And there was never any doubt that she was his girl. And he treated her well and always put her on a pedestal and always took care of her. He teased her mercilessly. <laughs> but as we all know, that was a Chuck Carver sign of affection. He only <laughs> ragged on those he loved. Um, and if you got teased by Chuck Carver, it meant something. It was a good day for you. Um, I, had, I had to laugh. <laughs> this, mor this morning I looked at my phone and I looked at the last text message that Chuck and I exchanged in which he um, <clears throat> disparaged the bocce tournament player he had been assigned partner with because <laughs> she was 81 years old and legally blind. <laughs> uh, I told Chuck he was going to have to carry the team on this one, and I really won't get into what his response to that was. He informed me later that they had lost in the first elimination, <laughs> and, and of course he had a lot to say about that. Um, and the last thing I said to him was, this is for the book you're destined to write. And he sent me back a heart. And that's the last thing I, I got from Chuck. And I will cherish it. Yeah. That's pretty good because we understand that he hated emojis. I was just so going to say, if he, he actually, emojis. He if he sent you one, he it was... was he he was easing into it the last, <laughs> the last few months I had gotten a couple I, I did I too had, he got he sent me a thumbs up and I was see, like whoa I had high yeah. hopes well you know he was retired he was too busy <laughs> couldn't type out words <laughs> you know I, I mentioned this a little bit yesterday with Todd and uh, you know even being competitors you know we didn't really get that whole colleague thing and yeah. we did each other a disservice by not getting to know one another sooner. And so he and I didn't even become friends on Facebook until we announced the sale of the radio station. Because of course, you know, if we did that and people saw that we were friends on Facebook, it would tip off the universe it, it, that the, something was going on. The Valley does not need much of a hint. To so, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, I've I've come to look forward to his posts, yeah. his pictures of sunsets and pictures of Air Force One parked across the street from his. <laughs> he thought that was so cool. His beloved <laughs> Brethren Village, it where they so live in cool. Lidditz now, and you know, and, and I said to Todd yesterday, I said, you know, he would post something. Well, I went and did this, went and did that. There'd be pictures of, of you know, uh, Michelle posted a picture of him. He just fell asleep in the lawn yeah. chair on the on the front porch of the right. apartment and and he just looks so at peace and relaxed and, well and in my view accomplished you know just you guys, like but you guys had everything to do with that oh, i mean he knew that he needed a strategy here as his career was winding down but he was adamant that it had to be the right people and he used that term over and over and over again because he was not handing his legacy off to people who were going to dishonor it or ruin it or or stop being what this community deserves and and it was almost instantaneous with him with the radigan family i i absolutely believe that and i think it's why he could sail off into the sunset <laughs> after you know 40 44 years with the station 40 years on that house on stedman they could leave everything behind and go to basically a new community and start over. Granted, the boys were there and their families, which was the draw, but that's a big thing to do. And the only way he could do that, the only way he slept at night, the only reason he was at peace was because he knew you guys were back here, you had picked up the baton, and you're gonna fight the good fight like he did. That's the gift you gave him. We don't talk about this much, and I'm not trying, I don't wanna to toot our horns at all. This is completely about Chuck, but there was actually somebody else that offered Chuck more money for the radio station than we did. But they weren't the right people. And he took our offer instead. Yeah. And so 
When people see me get emotional about my relationship with Chuck, it isn't just because there was another person with a, a, a slightly higher offer. It's because of the opportunity that he gave me and Irene and our family, our opportunity to grow, our opportunity to, there will never be another Chuck Carver, but to have the life that he and Michelle and the boys were able to have in this valley over the last 44 years with, you know, you don't do it for the buck. But at the end of the day, you do need some to keep the lights on and keep your family fed. Yep. And if you do the things that he did well, going to meetings, covering meetings, being everywhere all the time, waking up early, being on the air, doing the news, being connected and involved. If you do those things and do them well, you will be rewarded and, and have a nice life. And, and that's what he had. And that's what he gave us the opportunity to have as well and not to say that we don't have that already with our stations in a we go but in the age of consolidation where it just gets harder and harder and harder to make that same dollar that you made yesterday or last year yep. you need all the help you can get and i don't want to get too deep into business because business has been all right for for him and for us but this succession plan for him was not only exactly what WEBO needed for a bright future, but it's also what WAVR, WATS needed for a bright future. And as much as there's that invisible line somewhere between Owego and the Valley, these three radio stations need each other. And, and Chuck gave Irene and I that, but he gave the community that he gave the valley that he gave bradford county that he gave tioga county and Owego that as well is the prescription that was needed yep. and Absolutely. We, we have to navigate that and figure out what that is and how it's all supposed to work in the future but i you know there's the other layer to this which is i said this yesterday as well if chuck was here and we were both in the same room he would probably be the one to say that we're both too dumb to figure out how to make all these things work the right way. And this was God's plan to put us all together, to put all these components together, to have that apartment at Brethren Village come together when it did. I mean, uh, Sherry's here and she told us the story yesterday about how they identified that Brethren Village was where they wanted to be, right? Yep. Yep. And that there's a specific There was a apartment. specific, uh, they wanted specific amenities, if you will. They wanted a corner, uh, a corner place and they wanted this, that, and the other thing. And they were told it was going, the wait was going to be two to three years before such a, a, such an apartment opened up. And then the stars aligned. And then a month later they called and said, it's here. And they said, I thought we'd have two or three more years and I've got this house we need to sell this radio station this and then this pandemic that. going on and just the uh, we had dinner at Yanusi's in the middle of that and i said what are you two doing that's what, what i said what? <laughs> you're doing what why are you doing this now you can't go now you, you can't leave right and so quick are you sure are you sure we must have asked them that nine times at dinner are you sure they were rock solid there was a plan this came together as it should. Chuck saw the hand of God in it. I, I'm completely convinced of that. And then this was the path. All the lights were green, and here we go. And this was to be their last great adventure together. And now we know. Yeah. Yes. Who, who, and, you know, and we wouldn't have known that until Tuesday night. Exactly. We're remembering our friend Chuck Carver, the voice of the valley. Yes, he retired. But boy, it was that cut short. We received the devastating news Tuesday night that our good friend, Mr. Carver, had suffered a heart attack and passed away. He was not feeling well Tuesday afternoon. Uh, somehow, we don't know which way, whether he decided to go to the emergency room, he was brought to the emergency room, or uh, by ambulance, or by car, or by... We, we, had, we don't know any of the circumstances around that, but we know that he wasn't feeling well. He ended up in an emergency room and that there was nothing that could be done. And it all happened 
so quickly, out of nowhere, unexpectedly. Um, that same day, Tuesday, he was in communication with us. It was business as usual. He was retired, but you'd never know it because you'd get no less than one email a day from him. I mean, Sherry, five <laughs> times as many. Yeah. It was almost, honestly, yeah. it was almost like, it was funny. He retired from the radio station, but <laughs> you couldn't tell Chuck that that Sherry didn't work for him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> limits to the understanding of <laughs> retirement when it comes to chuck so yeah that that tie is going to stay in place don't be messing with that yeah, yeah and we've already discussed that you know we had a staff meeting or not a full staff meeting but we had a meeting here yesterday after everything calmed down in the studio irene and i and sherry had a, a conversation and we've already established that we're going to assist uh, Michelle in any way that we can because there is there is still some unfinished business uh, that Chuck and I had here on the horizon and so we're going to assist her to the best of our ability with that and uh, she'll be she'll be fine and and yes, she will. taken care of and, and she will make him proud yeah yeah so anyway that's the the sad news to report uh Maggie, you're welcome to stay with us for a little bit if you like. Oh, I, I don't think my heart can take much more of it. So <laughs> I'm going to step out. Thank you for this. Thank you for giving us a place to gather around the digital fireplace and be together as a family and tell our stories and, and mourn together. And uh, it's on behalf of the Valley, we, we thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming us the way that you all have. It's so overwhelming and honestly intimidating being the the next guy through the door after chuck you know uh it's it's like it's like following the kool-aid man around you know what i mean yeah, yeah you, you, uh, you look kind of subdued by a uh, comparison seriously like he just busts <laughs> through the wall like hey let's go guys you know what did the kool-aid man even say i don't remember now but what was it hey hey kids was it something about yeah? Yeah, he's kind of like, hey, yeah, yeah, it's an, oh yeah, ultra yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's, that's you know, that's <laughs> that's Chuck. Chuck's bigger than life, friends, and then here comes this little, you know, squeaky guy with a donut in his hand from a Wego, and it's like, okay, uh, we'll teach you how to have a meeting walking up the hallway at the same time. There you go. <laughs> the there Chuck Carver way. <laughs> Maggie Barnes, thanks for joining us this thanks, morning. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.